Hi, everyone. So as some of you may know, uh, Dave Feldman, Nick Norwitz, and their team, um, led by Dr. Budoff at the Lundquist Institute, they've released their baseline data on LMHRs, so that's the Lean Mass Hyper Responder Study. Um, I just want to quickly go through what the study means, why it's so important, and why some of the criticisms of it are really not helpful. So let's get into it. Before we do, I'm Samir, and I'm a health coach. I'm looking for six people who are ready to transform their health in 2024. If that sounds like you, give me a call. The link is below. Okay, so just very quickly, what is this study? There's a small subset of people who go on low-carb diets who see their cholesterol and specifically their LDL number go way up. Typically, this happens in conjunction with high HDL numbers. So LDL goes up, HDL goes up, and triglycerides also come way down. So those three numbers, so high LDL, high HDL, and low trigs, they define the LMHR phenotype lean mass hyper responder. For nearly all people who fit this pattern, we see, so I'm one of them, uh, we see our health significantly improve. Now we can measure that with metrics like blood sugar numbers and blood pressure numbers. But for me, the most important thing are the symptoms, right? People self-report feeling better when they adopt a low carb diet, even with this high LDL, right? Uh, according to the traditional cardiologist view, high LDL is causally associated with heart disease and it's dose dependent, right? And in the general population, I would say that's true, at least to some extent, although there are other um, indicators that are more risk factors. There are other things that are correlated that are higher risk factors than LDL levels, that's for sure. Um, but it's certainly causal in the sense that if you don't have LDL or lipoproteins of that class called APOB containing lipoproteins, you won't develop heart disease, right? And we know that because of certain genetic abnormal, uh, abnormalities where people don't have LDL, don't have APOB, and they don't develop heart disease, but they have other problems. Anyway, that's a, that's a side point. The lipid high heart hypothesis basically takes this a step further and says high APOB and LDL will cause a greater burden of heart disease. That's why doctors tend to recommend statins in otherwise healthy people with high cholesterol or high LDL lipoproteins, right? So the question is, in this specific population, the lean mass hyperresponders, does higher APOB and LDL correspond with more heart disease? So you know, and that's what one would expect. That's what the hypothesis would expect. It's the question that the team set out to address. And the methodology is, has done its best to isolate just that one variable, right? So there's a, uh, you take a healthy, otherwise healthy population with sky high LDL, sky high APOB, look for the clinical progression of heart disease measured in plaque buildup and see if, as expected by the lipid heart hypothesis, they would have a greater buildup of heart disease than another matched population. This study, the LMHR study, is ongoing, but they've released their baseline data. Contrary to the lipid heart hypothesis, the people in the trial with sky high LDL actually had less heart disease than a population matched control group. The controls were also healthy, very similar in terms of history, age, et cetera, but they obviously had much lower LDL numbers because that's the metric that the, that's the difference between the two groups. You want just one difference between the two groups. These folks, again, population mass controls from another study, the Miami Heart Study, they had slightly more disease than the people with sky-high cholesterol. Uh, they're going to be tested again in a year to see if there's further disease progression. Now, some of the criticisms, so, so the second Dave released this or started to talk about it, he, he got a lot of criticism from mainstream cardiologists. To me, what's interesting about those criticisms is how, how weak they are. They really suck, right? So let's go over a couple of criticisms. Number one, the people were too healthy. So this line of criticism says that one of the exclusion criteria was a history of heart disease. Um, so they effectively excluded anyone with any plaque at all. So it's not surprising to find no plaque in this group. That's not true, right? So the people who they excluded were people who had a clinical diagnosis of heart disease. So if you had an event, if you had a, a stroke or a heart attack or some other, some, some other heart-related problem, you were excluded because this was about healthy people, right? And by the way, all those same exclusion criteria applied to the matched controls from the Miami Heart Study. Um, and in both groups, there were some disease, right? There were people with positive calcium scores. There were people with plaque. This doesn't make any sense. We can ignore this. The second criticism is even weirder. Uh, doing the study is unethical. The argument here is that since we know, quote unquote, know um, that LDL causes heart disease, doing the experiment is unethical. Um, it's a weird argument. So, so. What, what is the person who's making this argument saying? They're saying, look, you're taking someone off their statins, but no one is, you can't, you, you can't take me off a statin because I'm not on a statin. What you want to do is you want to study me. Okay, I'm, I'm electing not to take a statin. That's my decision between me and my doctor, right? Uh, you can't control what goes in my body. I'm saying I'm not doing it, right? Uh, what goes in my body is my business. And if I'm refusing to take statins, then why not at least study what's going on? 
if the person making the objection is right, so if you're saying, look, your high cholesterol is going to lead to higher heart disease, well, then well, this is exactly the study that will prove your point. So it, this would have been a this would be a great study for that um, person who believes the lipid heart hypothesis because we're just doing the LDL. So if that's your hypothesis, then we'll see a pan out. Now, pretty much everything I've seen on the internet, okay, there's some people who just have no clue. So I'm not even going to address those people who have no idea what they're talking about. But these are the closest objections I can find who, from people who actually seem to know a little bit about what they're talking about. And as I say, it's funny because these objections don't stand up to the slightest scrutiny. Now, I have my own objection, which is basically that although this study is important, for, especially for moving the needle when it comes to the mainstream understanding of LDL and cholesterol and so on, for those people like me who... I haven't believed the mainstream since I first started reading these academic papers five or six years ago. What does the study add? If you take the best overview of cardiovascular disease that I've read, Malcolm Kendrick's The Clot Thickens, book that came out, I think, 2019 or 2020, I'm not sure. Um, that book explains in pretty clear terms that it's not LDL, but rather anything that causes damage to the endothelium. So for the most part, that's inflammation caused by sugar and insulin, but it can be other things as well. So sickle cell disease, and smoking are two examples that Dr. Kendrick goes into in detail, right? So basically what's happening is something is damaging. Blood pressure is also part of the story, right? So you have a, a very high uh, pressure system, the, um, you know, the, 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 the vascular system in the body, half of it, uh, the arterial system, not the veins, so the arteries, right? They are under very high pressure. That high pressure can um, requires that there not be too much, there shouldn't be too much grit in there, right? So if you have a sick, uh, uh, if you have red blood cells shaped like sickles, sickle cell disease, they literally tear the lining of the artery and you have these kids, some very, very horror stories, children having heart attacks at age four and five because they have this sickle cell disease and it, it's tearing up their, their body, right? So that's one example. Smoking also releases particles that will do the same thing. Um, sugar does the same thing too. Assuming that Dr. Kendrick's hypothesis is correct, and I think more or less it's pretty clear that it is, well, what would we expect? I think we'd expect that a population of people on a low carbohydrate diet would at least be slightly less likely to develop heart disease than the general population. And that's what this baseline data shows. So I should, I should emphasize this is baseline data. So the people on the low carb diet were on the diet for an average of almost five years, 4.7 years, I think. So it's not nothing, um, but you know, the fact that it's going to be tested again is, is interesting. So um, it's baseline data. It shows that um, that low carb population has slightly less heart disease. Um, I, I'm not sure it reaches significance but it's not it's not actually it's not that slightly it's like 25 to 30 percent less heart disease than the other population right why did we need this lmhr study i mean i didn't need it right so on the other hand when i talk with people every day who are concerned about their high ldl levels who aren't sure whether they should trust me or someone else to them this study is useful right this study is one more piece of reassuring data now does having a lean mass hyperresponder phenotype make you immune to heart disease like obviously not right no one is saying that Every once in a while, I'll have a debate with someone who said, I was a lean house, mass harbor responder and I developed heart disease or I, I developed a calcium score. That, usually they don't say they, they've developed heart disease because they haven't had a clinical event, but their calcium score has gone up, right? And to them, I say, look, in any individual case, I, I can't, you know, you can always find an example, right? There are factors like stress that are really hard to, to measure and can contribute to heart disease. Um, the fact that I, you know, used to smoke in my 20s, that may have some bearing on heart disease later on in life. We don't, we don't actually know some of this stuff, right? But the point is that it's not worse. The population, so at an individual level, I can't say anything. But at a population level, that population is not worse off than the general population. And that population, in fact, might be a little bit better, even than a healthy person with low LDL. As always, this is not medical advice. If you're concerned, go out and get a calcium score. There's a link down below to a blog post I wrote on my own calcium score experience down below. With that, I'm Samir, and I help people get healthy. I'll see you next time.